Welcome back. China's leader, Xi Jinping, has wrapped up his high-profile three-day visit to Russia. President Xi and Russian President Vladimir Putin held talks and photo ops throughout the trip, sending a direct message to the West about the relationship between their two countries. NBC News foreign correspondent Janice Mackey Freyer joins us now from Beijing to discuss. Janice, good morning. So the visit is over now, and both presidents did issue a joint statement on Ukraine. Can you first just break down what that joint statement said and overall... How did the visit go? Well, China's Xi Jinping and his Russian counterpart, Vladimir Putin, of course, they framed this summit as a success. They deepened their economic partnership and showed support for each other against international sanctions and a lot of scrutiny. There is no indication still that China intends to sell weapons to Russia, but Xi Jinping is standing with Putin in other ways. Uh, the summit happened just days after Putin was cited for war crimes by the International Criminal Court. Uh, they wrapped up the summit with statements and more than a dozen agreements on everything from scientific research to TV programs. What it shows is that Russia's economy, which is already isolated and depleted, by sanctions is go going to be even more dependent on China. On the ceasefire proposal in Ukraine, the two men were actually non-committal. Uh, their statements that they released basically reiterated positions that they've taken over the past year, things like protecting the security concerns of all countries. Uh, but they did unite in blaming the West and NATO uh, for standing in the way of something more meaningful uh, of an agreement in Ukraine. And Janice, John Kirby, the National Security Council Strategic Communications Coordinator, spoke during the White House press briefing just yesterday, and he responded to part of that joint statement you broke down for us regarding the war in Ukraine. So first, let's take a listen to what he said. So now if China wants to play a constructive role here in this conflict, then they ought to press Russia to pull its troops out of Ukraine and Ukrainian sovereign territory. They should urge President Putin to cease bombing cities, hospitals, and schools to stop the war crimes and the atrocities and end the war today. It could happen right now. So Janice, what is the potential impact from the visit on the war and China's ability to sway Russia one way or the other? It doesn't move things forward or any closer to some sort of ceasefire agreement in Ukraine that all sides could agree on. The concern uh, at the White House and in other Western countries uh, is that any Chinese proposal might actually keep in a gains in wading into this space of trying to cast itself as a potential peace broker is a strategic partner in Russia that has similar views on the U.S. and American foreign policy. Xi Jinping doesn't need Russia to win the war in Ukraine, uh, but he does want to ensure that Putin doesn't lose the war so he can maintain that strategic partnership. And it's why the two have now publicly committed to meeting yet again when Putin visits China later this year. And while there wasn't much progress when it comes to the war in Ukraine, I know China and Russia have agreed on a number of economic and business deals. What are some of them, Janice? Uh, everything, you name it. Uh, there's uh, scientific research, television programs. Uh, they're talking about uh, deepening ties on a number of fronts. It's mainly, though, uh, energy, cheap Russian energy. There's a lot of talk toward a second pipeline that would be sending uh, energy to China. China has had a voracious appetite for it, and in many ways it's been helping to keep Russia's economy afloat as Western sanctions continue to isolate the country. Janice Mackey Freyer, thank you so much. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.